What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and today I wanted to have a look at phase aligning your samples when you've done sample replacement. So I've got here a session, this is the same session that I used in a previous video, which was using Addictive Trigger to replace kick and snare samples. And if you haven't checked that out already, I'd recommend doing so. So this is kind of, you know, a picking up from where we left off there and taking this kind of one step further. So one thing is when we use software, any software to do any sample replacement, there's one thing that I always like to check and that's making sure that my kick and my, my samples, anything that I've done for sample replacement, I want to just make sure that those are pretty much in line with each other in terms of their phase. So these ones are pretty good. I'm just going to use my tab key to move through these here. So I think for the most part, it's done a pretty good job. And to be honest with you, there's not going to be that much detrimental artifacts that are going to happen. Sorry, detrimental artifacts are, that are going to happen with this phasing being the way it is. But any time that I'm working on anything that would be album production, I would definitely take the extra time, which actually doesn't take that long at all. And I'd want to make sure that I'm going through this project and making sure that all my samples are phase aligned with the source tracks. So let's go over a really quick workflow that we can use to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this track over here, which is the audio print of what happened with Addictive Trigger. So this just has the kick, sorry, the snare sample. And what I want to do is I'm going to do a detect transient on this. So if we right click, I've used this recently, so it's in my detect, sorry, it's in my recent items, but I can just go ahead and detect transients. Okay, so now that's gone ahead and it did a perfect job because it was very easy to detect these transients. So now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna use another shortcut over here. I'm gonna right click, and what I wanna do is I wanna split at the bend markers. Again, this is in my recent items menu because I've done this recently. So let's go ahead and split these. Okay, so now we have all of these events are representing each of these hits. But before we go any further, I want to talk about something else really quickly. So let's say that I want to zoom in here and I want to be working at, you know, um, you know, really high resolution in terms of where I'm zoomed into. One of the things that happens, I'm just going to go ahead, let's zoom in even further. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start zooming and you'll notice here that we can lose some workspace because Studio One is automatically going to put everything at the very edge of our workspace. So one way that we can combat this is that we can basically give ourselves a little bit of a padding so that it will force everything over a little bit to the right. Now this isn't essential at all, but this is just a little quick tip I wanted to show you. So I'm going to do a shift command A to select everything I have on my tracks here. I'm going to disable my grid mode. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the end of all the events to about here maybe even a little bit more. And then I'm going to pull back the beginning of all my events to about here. And what I like to do, what I find works out pretty good is if I give at least the distance of this, this half cycle of this waveform here, if I give at least that distance and sometimes I'll even give it a little bit more, it happens to work out really well. So now that we've done that, let's go back to the very beginning of this selection here. And I want to show you another thing when we have cursor, follows edit position enabled, and we use our arrow key, you'll notice that I don't even have to click the tab because we've already split this at the transients. I can just use my arrow keys and it will automatically snap our view. Now this makes it very easy to work with all your samples once you've cut them. Okay, so now that we've done this, this is really, really simple. All we have to do is zoom in. I like to zoom in somewhere about here. And then like I said, we can use this keyboard shortcut by using the left or right arrow key to very quickly move through things. Okay, so we'll go to our very first one. And now what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna hold down Option Command or Option Control on a PC until I get this tool here. And I'm just gonna manually slip this by hand. So I'm slipping the actual audio. The event size is staying the same, but I'm slipping the contents. Then I can just scroll through. I'm just guiding this up by eye, splitting the difference. And I can very easily make these adjustments just like that. Again, just using my right arrow key and then bringing my finger quickly back over to my keyboard shortcuts. And I'm just nudging these manually 
by using the slip function, just slipping these contents until everything is visually lined up. And honestly, like I said, this doesn't really take that long once you get used to it. And as long as you set up your workflow properly by having that little bit of padding, you can just use these keyboard shortcuts to basically get this done really quick. So we're almost done here. I'm just moving this over and you have to have your cursor positioned at the exact right position. So you're not engaging any of the new smart tool, smart arrow tool functions. And like I said, this is just guide lining these up visually. You can just very quickly go through. Okay. So now I've gone and I've done everything so I can go home and now I can just use my right arrow key and I can just make sure that all of these look lined up. Now all of my samples look like the phase is lined up really well. I'm just using my arrow keys with cursor falls edit position. The arrow key is just selecting my next or previous event and it's automatically snapping the cursor to the very beginning, which has given me this little bit of padding I need to work with. Okay, perfect. So now that these are all done and they're all phase aligned, what I would usually do at this point is I would do a shift command A or a shift control A on a PC and I'll just hit the group. I don't necessarily need to bounce this. In fact, I might not want to bounce it because I might want to change things or I might want to fine tune this a little bit later, or maybe I get things in the ballpark at first and then I take another pass later on to make sure everything's perfect. But essentially what I have now is I have all my kick samples that I used, I printed from Addictive Trigger, even though it did a really good job, now they're absolutely bang on. So we're not losing any of the girth of the snare. We're not creating any phasing problems by adding these new samples in. We're able to very quickly detect the transients, split them, give ourselves that little bit of a pre-padding or a buffer so that we can enable cursor follows edit position and then just use our left and right keyboard shortcuts to scroll through the events, which is allowing us to be able to work at a really zoomed in state and be able to slip the contents of the audio events and just visually align the phase so that all of our samples are in phase with our source tracks. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.